Hello fellow students, today I'm going to be talking about neon lights and other discharge tubes. Discharge tubes are nothing but tubes of low pressure gas through which an electric current is passed. And this simulation actually has a picture of um, different discharge lamps that have different colors because of the different elements in them or the different gases. There's hydrogen and the mercury lamp and a sodium lamp and a neon light which we usually see and appreciate. Okay, so how does that exactly work? This is a model of a discharge tube and basically it has two parallel plates at each end and there's these coils around them and when these coils are heated they spontaneously emit electrons that move from one part of the plate to the other. So you can see as I fire an electron, the coils are heated up, it glows red, and an electron is fired. You can also have a continuous stream of electrons that you can actually control the speed with which they flow out. Okay, so fire electron, and then this electron has an energy of three electron volts as it moves through the, t the tube. And this energy at this point the energy is not enough the energy at collision when it collides with this it can't actually collide with it at this low energy you have to increase the energy by increasing the potential difference between uh, between the plates and the electron can then interact with the electron inside the atom okay so I can choose to increase that voltage to about 5.25 where it's higher than energy level n equals to 2. So I can fire the electron and then you can watch what happens. Boom. There is a photon of light that is released from the atom. And um, this photon is released because there is an uh, inelastic collision between these electrons. So the electron inside the atom absorbs kinetic energy from the electron that is being fired and it absorbs that energy, it goes to a higher uh, energy state, in this case it goes to the energy level n equals to 2, and it momentarily stays there for like a little bit and then it drops that, it drops back to energy level 1, it loses that energy, and in losing that energy it releases a photon of light. This is um, a sodium lamp and it gives a, it would give off a yellow light, you would see a yellow light and you can see in this spect spectrometer below that um, yellow light is being released. There's also the case with multiple atoms and in this case it's a hydrogen lamp. So it's basically the same principle. You fire an electron and it is absorbed by one of the atoms and in this case you can see that photon bounce around and the thing is that when the electron collides with an electron in an atom and it releases that photon, that photon, since there are multiple atoms, it could be absorbed by another one when it is being released from one photon, and then if it is absorbed from that one, it could also be absorbed into another one, and that continues until it doesn't collide with anything and it, it's been emitted as light. So, with many electrons here, photons can actually be absorbed from one atom to the other. But the thing is that the energy of that photon must be equal to the energy difference between the energy levels, otherwise it would not be absorbed. And that is, I think it's pretty cool how um, they each play a role in this uh, process. And this um, simulation helps to understand this concept better because there are a lot of variables that can be tweaked to enable students have a feel of what happens in discharge tubes and I think that's really awesome with how the uh, makers of this simulation did that for students to have a grip on how discharge lamps work because it's not a really easy concept to understand in chemistry but this simulation really breaks it down and makes it easier for a lot of people to understand and you know do better in their classes in chemistry.